I never expected for Cassian's storyline to be my least favorite of the episode, but here we are. I still enjoyed it, but to me Mon Mothma and Luthen were the main highlights of this episode, and even Cyrell and Dedra's stories were great in this episode. This is the first time that an episode has really hit on every character's perspective and devoted enough time to fleshing it out and advancing it in a meaningful way. The episode begins with Cyrell, who's preparing for an interview with, for a new job after being fired from Primor. He chooses to wear a brown suit with a high collar, and his mother's words about what it says about his, him harken back to one of my gripes about the character from the premiere. He lacks confidence and seeks the approval of others constantly. I was hoping by now we, he would have grown a little more as a character, but we haven't spent enough time with him for any solid development. We're then introduced to the Bureau of Standards during his interview, in which he explains his reasoning for his actions on Morlano 1 and his subsequent firing. Even though the digitally added background can be fairly obvious at points in the scene, it was never to the point where I realized it upon my initial viewing. His story in this episode ends with some very simple yet well-edited shots showing how small and meaningless his position is. His superior mentioned during the interview that no job is unimportant there, which may be the case when looking at the data and numbers that they work with, but in terms of making an impact on the galaxy, Cyril went from having some authority to being just another rat in the lab, doing small work that doesn't help make the galaxy a better and more lawful place in his eyes. We then go to the ISB and see Wolf Ularen announcing new protocols that will tighten the Empire's grip on the galaxy and reinforce punishments for any crimes. I was questioning whether we would see him show up in the series at all, since he does become a part of the Empire and the ISB after the fall of the Republic, but his role made complete sense and didn't feel like a cameo for the sake of a cameo. With the Aldani robbery coming halfway through the season, and then the Empire responding by tightening its restrictions on the galaxy, I think we can expect the rest of the season to be much darker than the first six episodes. We get one last extended scene focusing on Dedra and the ISB, and this was one of my favorite scenes in the episode, although I don't know how much weight that holds because there were a lot of favorite scenes in this one. During the ISB meeting, different systems are discussed before Supervisor Blevin accuses Mira of overstepping her role by digging into the criminal records of different systems around the galaxy. It ultimately ends with Major Partagas supporting Miro's initiative and giving her authority over the Milana sector. Even though there were a lot of security and intelligence terms used during the meeting, that was part of the reason I enjoyed it so much. It's much more formal than the rest of the storylines to the point where it's refreshing to watch. The conflict between Blevin and Miro has been enjoyable to watch grow, as well as Denise Goff's ability to show how Miro was caught off guard by the accusation but quickly becomes confident in her research and findings that she is ultimately able to win over Partagas. The final conversation between the two when he tells Mira to watch her back also makes me much more excited to see her story continue the rest of the season, as she will likely find herself in more dangerous and complicated situations. Even though what we've seen from the ISB has been nice so far, they feel very far removed from the rest of the stories because they're on top of Coruscant, away from the conflict so seeing Miro finally have to deal with a bigger problem than just an envious Blevin will make her storyline much more interesting to me. Now going to Luthen and Mon, there's a lot to break down about what these characters are up to and where they're heading for the rest of the season. Luthen learns over the radio about the mission's success on Aldani, and then Mon Mothma makes a surprise visit after she herself learns about the attack on the Imperial Garrison, under the guise of getting a new gift for Perrin. She learns that he did in fact have a hand in what happened on Aldani, and we get to start seeing the major differences between the two characters. Mon wants to help in any way she can to fight back against the Empire, but she doesn't want to see any innocent lives lost during the process. She believes that they can still win by playing by the rules, which harkens back to the conversation she has with Saw Gerrera that we see in Star Wars Rebels. Luthen, on the other hand, wants to make his presence known to the Empire, and he knows that in order for progress to be made, people are going to have to suffer. He really seems to be the Saw Gerrera of the series so far, the rebel with questionable morals, so I'm looking forward to seeing how Saw himself will be portrayed at this time in his life. We know he shows up at some point in the season, and there's only five episodes left now, so it'll probably be within the next two or three. We then see Clea walking through the upper levels of Coruscant to meet with Vel. 
even though I enjoyed getting to be immersed more in the average course on scenery and walkways. Once she got outside, the scene started to drag for me. Other than the music, which was phenomenal throughout the entire episode, I began to lose interest in the story. The rebel marking on the ground, as well as the variety of shots used, kept it manageable, but I think it could have been shortened a bit. In an episode that was very dialogue heavy, as the beginning of the new arcs have been, this was a long time to go with only Clea walking and music playing in the background. She meets up with Vel, and they discuss the mission. It's confirmed that Sinta staying behind was a part of the plan, and that she does have orders on what to do afterward. She won't be staying to live by herself or anything, which makes it more likely that she didn't kill the Imperials and that they were true to their word. All we see from Sinta is her setting up her speeder as an Imperial Star Destroyer arrives and then riding down the edge of a mountain, so it's hard to know where her story is going from here, but this basically confirms that we'll see more of her, something that I wasn't too sure of after last week. Kalea also mentions Cassian and how he knows too much to be walking around alone, so Vel is ordered to kill him. However, her reaction to the order makes me think that Cassian may find his way back to Luthen's side and continue helping in the rebel effort, especially with where he's at right now, but I'll save that for later. We finally get to see the house party Mon Mothma attends that we see in the trailers, which is full of the Imperials and other Senators. Mon reminisces with fellow Chandrillan and old friend Tay Colma, who is a banker in their homeworld. After allowing her daughter Leda to be excused, who in terms of tone and attitudes felt very much like a normal teenager here, Mon continues her conversation with Tay as she decides how much to reveal to him. He is the person who has been referred to in past scenes that Mon wants to help bring in to help access her family funds to keep funding rebel activity. She mentions that only three other people know about her dealings, so two of them are Luthen and Clea, but the third is more than likely Bail Organa. Even though he isn't mentioned by name, this small mention of him and his relationship to Mon makes me hopeful that we will see him in the season. Even though I've enjoyed not having a bunch of cameos, something that I'll admit did start to get old with shows like The Mandalorian or The Book of Boba Fett, Bale is one of the already known characters that I'd be glad if he showed up. Similar to Yularen, appearing earlier in this episode, it's a small enough character to not overshadow everything, but it still makes perfect sense considering the story and what is being told. The rest of the conversation continues, and this was the Mon Mothma that I had been hoping to see in the series. She has some great quotes about her two-sided appearances, with one to the Empire and the Senate, and the other to the Rebellion. After realizing that Tay isn't big on the Empire like she is, she finally starts to allude to some of her dealings, and I loved the fact that she mentioned multiple times to just keep smiling and act like they were reminiscing on their childhood. Just like Mon has been doing her entire time in the Imperial Senate, she shows everyone one thing to make them forget about another. By being a slight irritation to the Empire and the Senate with her humanitarian efforts, they have become so focused on that that they don't realize that she's been helping the various rebel efforts across the galaxy. The series takes place much earlier before we see Mon Mothma finally speak out against the Empire publicly in Star Wars Rebels, but I would love to see more of Mon Mothma's dealings with the rebellions and her slowly start to realize that this is a battle that cannot be won peacefully. So far the character has had some great moments, especially considering that we have never really seen her this early into the Empire's rule, where a solution still seems possible. But I think once we get to start seeing her in Season 2, that's when I'm going to really love her scenes. Even though Cassian was in a majority of this episode, it felt like he was somewhat of a background character. His scenes, while nice, never caught my attention like some of the other ones that I've discussed are here. Part of this may have been because we never see him until 17 minutes into the episode, after we have already seen all the other storylines, or just because there weren't any action scenes. It was much harder for me to transition from the action-packed arc finale last week to a dialogue-heavy episode this week than it was between the two initial arcs. Like I mentioned before, however, the music was phenomenal and helped add stakes and tension to an episode without any action. Cassian begins by returning to Ferex. Now that he has the credits, he plans to pay back his debts and leave with Marva and B2 to find a planet to live on away from the Empire. He arrives at his old home to tell them about his score and his plan to get away, and he learns that the Empire is now in control of the planet. After telling Marva about his plan, 
he lets her get some rest and reunites with Bix, who is still recovering from being beaten during the raid. He doesn't exactly get the warm welcome he expected, and learns that he is blamed by the town for the Empire's takeover, and that any of them would turn him in. Even though this seems like a nice conclusion to his relationship with her and the other townsfolk, I do hope and expect us to return again sometime in the future. Not only do I want to see more of these characters and get to see them have a bigger role, but I find it hard to believe that this is how Cassian would want to let things end on. As Cassian walks away through the streets, we flash back to when the Empire first arrived. We see an Imperial officer as well as soldiers sporting the clone armor, a sign that this is not long after the fall of the Republic. And whereas Cassian's homeworld of Canari was under Separatist rule, it looks like Ferrix was with the Republic during the war, with one of the citizens shouting, Long live the Republic. It's been a while since we've had a flashback scene, but every time we've had one it's been used well. This scene not only shows the first time the Empire came to Ferrix, but also why Cassian and Marva have a reason to hate them. Later, when Cassian arrives back home, we learn that his father figure, Clem, the same name that he used while on Aldani, was hanged in the town square by the Empire. Marva informs Cassian of her decision to stay and fight back against the Empire, and even though the character hasn't been one of my favorites to come out of the series, Fiona Shaw's acting paired with the subtle music filled the scene with so much more emotion and weight. As an audience, we really do feel like we're leaving behind a family member, just as Cassian is. We later jump forward to Nemo, where Cassian tries to live his life beyond the gaze of the Empire. On his way to the store, he is caught in the middle of an arrest and questioned by a stormtrooper, who believes that Cassian may have been a part of the crime. He's detained by a KX Imperial droid, and although I've seen talk online that this may be K2SO, I don't think this droid was focused on enough in the scene to become K2. I think it's more likely we see K2 next season rather than this one. Cassian or rather Keef Gergo, the name he's been living under, is sentenced to prison for six years, which relates back to the ISB meeting that began the episode. After Aldani, punishments have become more common and harsher for any anti-imperial activity, so in a way, despite not committing any official crime on Nemo, Cassian, as well as Luthen, were responsible for his sentence after forcing the Empire's hand. We've seen scenes during the trailer where Cassian is an imperial prison, so we'll likely see these scenes play out in the next two episodes. We also know that Luthen wants Cassian taken care of, so he doesn't spill any information, which will become a serious concern after he learns that Cassian is in prison. With every third episode being action-packed, my guess is that the next episode will set up Luthen breaking Cassian out of his prison, which will actually take place in the ninth episode of the season. Announcements involves some great character and story developments, as characters respond to the rebel attack on Aldani, as the series continues to showcase incredible music and consistent quality of storytelling, earning a rating of 8.5 out of 10. Let me know what you thought of the seventh episode in the comments below. Remember to like the video and subscribe for more reviews like this. And remember to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Thank you all for watching, and remember, the Force will be with you, always.